ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, distinguished guests, and everybody else. Welcome this evening to the uh, Creativity and Innovation uh, Seminar. I've, uh, if I haven't met you, I'm Bruce Knox, I'm the director of the secondary school, and it's my pleasure to, to welcome our special guests. Uh, but before I do, I would like you to cast your mind back to 2008. If your son or daughter is in their final year, they were in grade two. And I'm sure at some stage you asked them, what do you want to be when they were in grade two? And maybe some of them are about to embark upon that journey of becoming a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. I'm going to read out a list of jobs that there is no way any of those uh, conversations 10 years ago mentioned. Because these are jobs that exist today that did not exist just 10 years ago. So none of you were talking about being an app developer or a social media manager or an Uber driver. Now for that matter, maybe not many of us want to be an Uber driver, but for the person who developed that app, that's now the most valuable startup company in the world. $62 billion net worth. Um, you weren't talking to your kids 10 years, about, years ago about being a digital marketing specialist or a driverless car engineer or a cloud computing specialist. And the list goes on. And I'm sure none of you had a conversation with your eight-year-olds discussing becoming a beach body coach. But that is a real job somewhere that someone is doing that they had to go to university to become. So sitting here today, I'm, I've been looking forward to this presentation for some time because the gentlemen that we have here are going to talk about the situation as it exists now and how that applies to you as parents and the conversations that you can be having with your son or daughter about what next. Because the what next for your children is very different to the what next that was for you. So without any further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome, I have to look at these names, Hani Asfor, Yusuf Asfor, Ayman Juma, and Muhammad Raba. Let's put our hands together for these gentlemen here. For what I'm sure will be a very, very interesting presentation on what next. Good evening. Thank you, Don, Mary, Heba, the whole team, for arranging this. Today, I'll be sharing my. Sorry. Today, I would love to share my thoughts with you about what I think the future careers will be. The world around us is changing so fast that we cannot notice this change anymore. But let's take a quick look about the past 15 years. What we consider to be science fiction is today a reality. Even an app or a service like Uber seem to be very futuristic science fiction and a long shot. Today, it's a reality and it's already integrated in our daily life. Data is the new oil. Every day, an amount of data equivalent to the total data that was produced since the beginning of humanity up till 1980 is written. Today, 44 billion gigabytes of data will be written and produced. And that's almost, uh, if we divide it by 4 billion internet users, it would come up to 11 gigabytes per internet user. By 2025, this number is expected to grow by tenfolds. Let's take a look back into our school life. Access to information used to be very hard and time consuming. And we had to memorize almost everything. If we were out and needed a piece of information, 
we would have to find a phone, call somebody back home to access this piece of paper or encyclopedia to fetch this information. Today, access to information is so easy and fast. For our children, the most important material to teach nowadays is mathematics. To help them find the logic and problem-solving techniques to access and analyze this information. I'll switch a little bit to careers. A change in mindset is necessary and urgent. With the strong social ties we have in a country like Lebanon, competition is a given and it definitely contributed to the leverage and distinction we have sometimes. However, the direction must change. The competition on how many doctors, lawyers, and engineers each family has generated should change urgently. In the next 20 years, most of the careers we know today will cease to exist. Even the doctor and lawyer will change from the way we know them today. Artificial intelligence became a reality, and it's smarter than we ever imagined. The amount of information this AI can process and analyze is beyond any human capability. In the States, artificial intelligence proved to be 70% more accurate than doctors, and much more also accurate than lawyers. And for a fact, it needs no coffee breaks. It can work around the clock. Um, AI also performed uh, much better with robotics. Today, we in this room even trust hospitals that have robotic surgery capabilities more than other hospitals. Taking decisions. To take the right decision, you need more of three elements. Time, data, and intelligence. Time is shrinking. And what we are experiencing today is uh, actually what Einstein spoke about, uh, the theory of relativity. We are living longer, but time is passing so fast. We used to experience the seasons. We used to experience summer vacation. Today, all this seems more continuous. This leaves us with two elements to look at, data and intelligence. Our kids will take part in reshaping this future that looks like this, less emotional, smarter, more results-based, uh, longevity at its scientific edges, cleaner energy, uh, more predictive, uh, Robot, robots doing most of the burger flipping jobs and uh, definitely seeking eternal life. A lot of jobs will disappear. These jobs here, insurance representatives, farmers, taxi drivers, uh, postal service, data entry jobs, door-to-door -door sales, these jobs will definitely disappear very soon. As for future careers, and this should be taught to children and integrated heavily in our systems. STEM skills and SMAC skills, is, SMAC skills are a must. STEM skills that stand for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. SMAC skills that are social, mobile, analytics, and cloud. These will be the, the essentials for future careers, where innovation became a must. It's no more an option, not even today. Some of the new careers, and we'll see in a bit. Alternative energy engineering. Since the world cannot survive forever using the fossil fuel, there is a must for uh, uh, such consultants to pick the best between wind, solar, hydroelectric, and other alternative energies. Natural disaster forecasters for earthquakes, volcanoes, storms, and probably this rain today. Medical mentors actually will be working with patients uh, after they are diagnosed and analyzed by artificial intelligence and maybe operated on by robots. Human touch will still be uh, needed, especially for follow-up and guidance. 
organ and body, body part creation. Uh, yes, this will be a career in high demand uh, in the very near future. Manufacturing kidneys, hearts, lungs, basically spare parts. Memory surgeons to take out certain memories and put in some new ones. Uh, what, uh, even what you spoke about, productivity consultants with all these distractions around us, social media, tech platforms, etc. We need consultants for productivity. IoT and security repairs. What we know today as plumbers and repairmen will be repairing our automation at home, uh, the exploding IoT devices all over, and we're adding a new component every day. Trash engineering is also a must, with billions of tons of waste produced every year. These cannot be put in landfills. Uh, this is becoming an urgent need, and a lot of focus will be on this career in the future. Uh, personal flight instructor. This might seem like science fiction, but it's not training how to fly an airplane, a commercial airplane. Actually, it's expected that by 2030, humans will actually fly their own drone or their own flying machine or by 2030 and it's near. Uh, commercial space pilots as well. Now this seems more real with uh, Richard Branson's investment in his uh, new space program. Uh, I'll, I'll cut it short. Let's make our children ready for their future. It comes soon enough. It started yesterday and we're already late. Thank you. sections in the presentation that I will share with you. One which continues what Ayman just shared, the changes that is happening in AI and trends in jobs. The second part is a bit the design part which always which also plays a major role today, which is the design thinking approach. And in these I give you a real case study how we applied this as a team in the Beirut Digital District. And then I end up going back to the first slides which showing you what are the com companies and the community that we currently host at BDD are looking for as jobs that and how are we preparing the new talents to cater for these needs. So, to go on and continue what I am saying, according to Oxford University, 2040, 50% of the jobs that we know today will never exist, will not exist anymore. How? Being replaced by AI. Currently, the speed of the artificial intelligence is 9.3 times faster than the human brain. By 2030, the speed of the artificial intelligence will be thousands of times faster than the intelligence brain. AI has already started working and dwelling into our lives. This is, you see them by Google, planning routes, AccuWeather, Translate. You've noticed, you've seen potentially the Google Translate ePods, which is you can speak in your own language and automatically it's translated. And what does this gives to in the future? One universal language, no need to know languages, is automatically being able to communicate between the world. With that, Amazon, self-driving cars, Tesla, and in 2016, for the first time, it beat the player go. So as we move, this is really exponentially increasing. And the predictions goes to within 25 years, we will see the emergence of RoboDoc. We will see the emergence of RoboLoy. If you hear, and I can share this, uh, this movie with you, which is a five minutes movie being presented by a Japanese teacher, scientist, researcher. He's saying that we expect every human being to be chipped. 
human beings are already chipped and under experience in Nordic countries. But within 25 years, we expect that every student, and this is for teachers, will have chips in their eyes. And they will blink. And once they blink, the chips will take them online. And if they want to know what is your question, what is the answer of your quiz, they will just know it by blinking. By blinking, you will get access to robo lawyers who knows all the laws worldwide if you are in a car accident. If you blink, you're just going to speak with your car and tell her to go park itself, and there's no need for a car anymore. So these are the changes that are already happening and are already being tested. This is just a photo of the current manufacturing facility at Toyota. And we see with that how it evolved with almost no man included in these production facilities. And this gives us the needs to be able to teach our children. As we grow, two sets of needs, technical and deep technical skills, centered around robotics, business intelligence, programming, machine learning, and big data. And the most important, what will always differentiate the human being is the soft skills. And in the soft skills is teamwork, communication, that we will focus in this presentation on two main things, which is emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence and the problem solving technique and the involvement of that. You all know that we've all almost taken an IQ test. Well, IQ test is not the basis that companies look for anymore in hiring people. You can be in a very high, I can have a very high IQ and yet do not succeed in life. And companies have discovered that the most important factor in success for a company is hiring emotionally intelligent people. And what are emotionally intelligent people? The five pillars of emotional quotient are self-awareness, self-liberation and management, social skills, empathy, and motivation. I will not go within each one of these, but I invite you to go and Google and see what is emotional intelligence and what are these pillars. In summary, emotional intelligence, there's just one small uh, gland in our brain, which is called the amygdala, that stops any access of information to our brain to be able to answer it. Example, if I ask uh, Basma, Basma, what's your name? Like, what's your name? She's going to tell me Basma. If I tell her, uh, and excuse me, I'm addressing my wife here just for, for, for that. If I, I tell her, uh, hey, or, hey uh, ask her, what's your name? For example, quote unquote, she stops at the first word, and that stops anything related to IQ. Being able to control your emotions and deal with people in any situation is the most important item that we have and which proved to companies being able to save and increase their market share and increase their sales. The other one, which is the problem solving techniques, is switching to a design thinking elements and design thinking is four pillars. People-centered, highly creative, hands-on, and iterative. And people-centered is how, do I, how can I improve the life of people. How can I, and always teach your children in anything, in problem solving, is what is the impact? How even for technology? Technology is used, it has all, always existed. It existed in the 1600s, in the 1800s, we're living in a revolution, but is the purpose of it, how technology can improve your efficiency, your work, your life, your social well-being. And this is where you are always at the consumer-centered approach. The second, interactive, integrative thinking, thinking is key. Try with prototypes. Hands-on is very important. Hardware techniques, hardware learning is key for the students and for children to be able to come up with prototypes. Don't ask them to be perfect. Don't ask them. Let them fail. Failure is very important. And this is for emotional intelligence. They will only learn by failing. Let them fail the first time, second time, ten times, but that's how they will learn and they will get it. And the final is iterative and that's how we will get better. So on going on this design thinking, we at ZRE thought how is, because technology 
and this is disrupting all industries. How in the real estate sector, what is happening? And from us, this is what we see. We know that times are changing, and so are spaces. Homes reflect personalities. Offices are hubs for friendship and creativity. And nature future the external world with the indoors. Spaces have become a statement of humanity and ought to existence. A sense of life is no longer about building blocks, nor about layers of concrete. It's about building adventures, memories, and stories. It's all about building communities. This is where we position. We believe real estate is not anymore about physical spaces. And every project you need to do is you need to cater it for a specific community, the needs of this community, and see how you can manage communities instead of just managing spaces. And with that, you integrate the technology. And you see in the real estate sector, disruptive technology already existing from drones, AI assistant, blockchain, virtual reality, augmented reality, going along the whole value chain of the real estate, from inspiration, ideation, execution, marketing, sales. And this brought us to think how, in Beirut Digital District, we want to integrate the design thinking and cater to the community that we want. Who are these community of flexible, tech-savvy, entrepreneurial, nomadic, progressive thinkers and creative minds? And with that, we came out with five foundations and pillars that drove our vision. And these are community, design, business cluster, sustainability, and work-life balance. In community, from day one, we wanted to attract like-minded people, put them in the same place so that they share ideas, collaborate together, and as they grow, we grow with them. Design, flexible spaces, creative spaces that foster collaboration and optimize the efficiency of these spaces so that the companies become more efficient and as they grow, we grow with them. Business cluster, one-stop shop, let every company focus on its core idea and we take care of everything else. Uh, Ministry of Finance, Municipality, Legal, Accounting, Auditing, HR services, we offer for free so that the company can focus on its core business. And sustainability, no project is a successful project if it's not a sustainable project. And this is the green lead and we aim to achieve a lead gold lead certification for the whole, for the whole neighborhood. Work-life balance, you spend more than 60-70% of your time at the office. We must complement it with a work-life balance so that the people living there enjoy it. And with that, execution. Execution. We launched BDD in five years, since five years ago, September 2012, five years and a half. In the span of five years, we executed with the team 10 buildings. That's a building every six months. Every people walks in there and sees the transformation and says, we couldn't imagine that this transformation would have happened in five years. And I tell them this is only the beginning. Why am I trusting on this one? Teach your children. Ideas constitute 10 to 20% of the success. Everyone now with internet, can copy ideas. It's all about execution, better and faster. Better and faster in a more innovative way. And if they don't do this, and if you don't, you're just left around and someone will do it better, better than you and will take your market. And this is what we did. And in the future, as we see it in the execution, we already know 3D printing for construction. We know the use of robots for repetitive, such as bricklaying, modular construction, virtual reality to imagine spaces, and to better plan and execute. Marketing and sales. No. Traditional way, door-to-door, -door, printed, email marketing, telemarketing. Today, forget about that. Digital marketing, digital social media, customer segmentation, data analytics, so that you know what to market to every person and what does every person preference needs to see. Everyone knows that TVs are moving where if I'm watching the same TV station, potentially Heba uh, might be looking and seeing a commercial about, let's say, uh, IC or something of her interest, and I will see another commercial, and this will be segmented based on customer segmentation. At the same time, in reality, 
whereas it's targeting different consumers. So that's facility management from preventive on demand to currently what we employ, productive digital, digital valet parking. We have IOTs that are within our buildings that predict any water failure, any AC failure, any access control to monitor the valet parking optimization and the use of resources to be able to properly manpower, use the manpower we already apply it there. And as we grow, this will only increase by making the buildings much smarter and control to optimize the energy usage and to optimize the spaces that are used by our community. Community management, most important. As we go back, this did not, did not exist before. And today, by creating a community, we link the community through our media app. We have an internship program, and we cater to our community needs to make sure that the word of mouth, which is the most single important marketing tool to be able to succeed, is integrated. And this is what we see all the real estate going into the community management aspect. So all of these, what happened by integrating all of these? Five years ago, this one. Who has been to BDD? Okay. Who knows where BDD is? Okay. So, who knows Khanda Al Ghami? We're at Khanda Al Ghami. Just for, and we are proud to be there. Everyone who knows knows how difficult of an area that was. Five years ago, no one has stepped foot inside it. The government left out no infrastructure, nothing. And with the, with the right design, with the right approach, with the right community, and most importantly, with working with the community of the neighborhood to be able to grow together by employing from the neighborhood, by supporting kids to go to schools, because this is the most important element. They see it now as success. We were able to transform this area from a war torn area to a vibrating area with people. And this is where, to a community that lives at BDD and works at the BDD. And last year, just to give you as an ecosystem, we had 1,000 events at BDD catered for the technology tech startups, hosting and servicing our community and external events. And if you have any event, and we host all of these for free, because we believe the added value is of having these people to exchange idea and collaborate and grow. While introducing designs, when we build on our heritage, so just to give you, to go back, see this building? And this one, at the corner, left corner, when we went in, there was a sniper's room. Separation lines, we had a big debate in the office from a design perspective. We keep it, we remove it. Finally, we decided to remove it. We wanted to keep it and put photos so that we remember really one of the darkest. But why do we maintain these beautiful buildings? Because these buildings are our culture and we want to build on our current culture, our heritage, and introduce the future. And today, there's also this church, which is a 150 years old church that is being renovated, that will be renovated. And I'll show you another building that has, and we believe that if, if these uh, walls can speak, they have seen the best times of Lebanon, the worst times of Lebanon, and what we're trying to do is really to bring back the best times of Lebanon with the mix, which is the hope of Lebanon and the community of Lebanon. So, so that old house is this one. Fully refurbished, design occupied most importantly, and with that we built another old building. These are priceless building. That's, that's Basma first baby, first baby girl. Like she always calls it and her, her, our daughter asks her, who's that? She loves this building, so this one, anyone who needs, everyone wants to be inside these buildings. With that, collaborative spaces that foster collaboration, innovation, Done on this photo by no other than Mr. Hani Askur, who will share with you his designs. And training rooms, shared meeting rooms, shared training rooms where this is the academy that is used to host all our training facilities. 
and inside spaces, and finally, green spaces, which is for the lead, and the work-life balance, where you have the eateries, the playground, the fitness classes, all for the our community. And to show you the spirit of BDE, an eco-friendly, innovative, colorful community, a hub for the digital and the creative, vibrating with ideas, plans, and energy, a unique ecosystem where creative talents connect, interact, and flourish in an inspiring space of entrepreneurship. A community of people passionate about ideas, driven by progress, who aim for the stars, designed to challenge, empower, connect, and build friendships. A place where ideas are formed and entrepreneurs are born. A perfect balance between the work, the life, and the play that comes with it. We are a reflection of a vision where Lebanon shines as the center of innovation. We are BDD. So, this is the community. This is what we are proud of. What did we see here? For me, we saw the hope of Lebanon. So the energy. So the community. We believe, this is why we started the, the BDD and we invested, having invested, that this is the oil and gas that Lebanon has. This is the talent that Lebanon has. This is what differentiates Lebanon in being the center to become a production facility. Oil and gas, as I said, will be replaced by renewable energy. But talent, creativity, design, uh, coding, robotics, this is a human being who will always design these. And this is what the future, and this is what Lebanon should enjoy and should invest in. And this is what we are doing. And we're just trying to put them in the right ecosystem to empower each other, to collaborate, and to help them grow. And this is why we have currently 1,500 community members, 100 companies, aged 22 to 40, 95%, proud to have 55% females and 45% males. We graduate 75 startups per year from our accelerators, three VCs to get them the money, one incubator, and we host 45% of Lebanon's uh, ecosystem event. With that, we have our partners, our incubators, our VC, small startups that we support and that scale up, such as Uber that we mentioned, National Instruments, JFK, we just signed, I'm happy to announce it here, Warner Music Group has selected to have its official uh, office in the Middle East, or in North Africa, in Lebanon, and it has chosen BDD to be its, its, its home. And with that, we're just growing with our community. And to go back to the original, what are these companies looking for? We currently have, with the internship program and our job portal, 150 openings. What are they looking for? Technical, 41. Full stack web developer, web and app developer, going at the start. Did we hear about these before, 10 years ago? No. Software engineer, Android developer, iOS developer, front end developer, SEO editor, SEO. With that, business, even in the business, what are the business uh, types of positions that are being asked for? First one, digital marketing officer, customer success leader, media and planning buying, account manager, community manager, business analyst. And third, creative, graphic design, video, viral content, creative content, and creators. This is really of what is being asked today. And the future will only hold different job opportunities. And with that, to be able to cater for them, and we try to work with schools. We have four uh, institutions that help on the not on STEM and STEAM. Even even the arts is very important. That's why you saw the graffiti that we mentioned between me. That's why we commissioned a graffiti artist to show a small child working on an Arduino because we believe this is the future and this is what the, the differentiate the world. We work with the universities through our internship program and final year project program and hosting the ideas. And this is all to help really grow. And today, just to focus on school, our partners, which is Coder Maker and Little Engineer, Tizu Code, Kids Genius, cover coding, robotic, hardware, and 3D printing. And I invite you to really bring, uh, send to even other than uh, BDD or these four, your children to a hardware, to a coding, to a uh, uh, 3D printing, and even to some arts 
some arts uh, workshops. This is essential to teach them all these skills. And with the just, and just to go on that, with IEA Coder Maker, last April, we had the final competition of the Raspberry Pi competition. 40 public schools and private schools from all over Lebanon came and between elementary and graduate schools presented their projects, which is all what you're seeing downstairs. And with that, this is only the first phase. We aim by 2030, by introducing furnished apartments, residential apartments, three, four side hotels, and most important, convenient retail to serve the community and make it a self-sustainable, technologically advanced neighborhood to have 10,000 community members who will be working, living, and playing at the Beirut Digital District. And with that, we just launched phase two, which is currently under construction, and you see the transparency, you see the uh, exchange of the volume, which allows light and fosters collaboration and within transparent offices, which is the future, and always creating for the creative class and the phase C and phase C. This is just one of the prototype and concept that we developed for the living units that will cater for the new families at BDD who will live with the children there. With that, For. Um, first of all, most importantly, I'm Hani's brother. So here's that chance to put the boss foot in the pajar and two birds in one board. So um, I'm the CIO, Chief Information Officer at uh, AUB. Some people think that CIO stands for careers over. And maybe after this discussion, you know why. Um, given the discussions before, they were talking about all the things that are happening in technology. What I'd like to do today is instead of talking about careers and technology, I'd like to talk to you about careers and technology. And that's important because technology has become very critical in everything we do. And in fact, if you start thinking about all the successes in the world currently, a lot of them have to do with technology. For example, uh, probably everybody knows Bill Gates. Um, he is the founder of Microsoft, and he's somebody who used technology to change the way we use computers. We also have Steve Jobs, who actually changed the idea of computers. We used to think of computers as things you put on your desk or in a data center. Now, actually, we wear computers. There's also Julian Assange, who, Assange, who basically changed the world of how we share information. Some people might agree with what he does, but he did make, make certain changes. And then we have Elon Musk. I don't know if you know, but Elon Musk actually invented PayPal, and he changed the way we do business. He changed the way we pay, and the way we pay, and because of that, he started changing other things like Tesla and SpaceX. But there's also Jeff Bezos, who changed the way we do shopping, and then we have Mark Zuckerberg, who changed the way we socialize. And then, we, of course, we have um, Travis Kalanick, who changed the way we do businesses. He was probably one of many first who started a company without any assets. A taxi company without taxis, just like Airbnb is, a hotel company without rooms. And then we have Satoshi Nakamoto. Anybody know who that is? Actually, nobody knows who he is, but he's the one who invented Bitcoin, and which is now based on blockchain, which is changing the meaning of money and changing the meaning of what contracts are. So then the big question is, what do all these people have in common? Anyone? They're creative, imaginary, imagine. They're not imaginary, they're real. Visionary. I think a key fundamental thing among all of them is that they use technology to solve real problems in really innovative and creative ways. That's the fundamental thing. Technology is something that we use to solve real problems. And the key is, as our colleagues here were saying, a lot of the jobs will be gone with artificial intelligence coming on board. Even doctors and lawyers and CIOs will be gone. It used to be that we needed to have skills. Now what keeps us alive is innovation and curiosity and imagination. And that's what is common across all of those. So then the big question is, how do you get there? 
How can I become like that? Well, you have multiple paths. One path is to get involved in creating technology. And for those paths, you can work as an engineer, you can study computer science, you can do robotics, machine learning, data analytics, and all the things that our colleagues talked about here. But that's not the only path that you can get there. You can also get there by applying those technologies. You can become a businessman, or a health scientist, or a social scientist, or a communication major, even a political scientist or an arts major. All of those things are about applying technology in different and innovative ways to make you get there. Here are some examples. I don't know if everybody knows Hind Hibaya. Uh, she's a Lebanese. She invented InstaBeat goggles. These are the goggles that you wear and when you're swimming to basically uh, measure your heart, heart rate. She's won so many major awards and she's a mechanical engineer. Here's Fuad Maksoud, also Lebanese, also young. He basically created a nano shielding technology where you, you can put the uh, textiles in this machine and you throw it at nanotechnology stuff. So you can throw it at medicines, you can throw it at electronics, so you can start measuring things and even healing people. He's a chemical engineer. He also won lots of awards. Here's another one, Lulul Khazan Baz. Guess what? She's a hotel management major. And she's created Nabish.com. I don't know if you've heard of Nabish.com, but it's, it's the, basically the monster of the Arab world. If you want a job, go look there. She's won a lot of entrepreneurial awards, and she's doing great with technology. And here's Rudaina Abdo, who's an architect and an urban planner. Her passion is about helping people. So she started an NGO called uh, Deki.org that actually collects computers and works with teachers to put online education technology so that she can help the underprivileged and the refugees. So you can start with any major. That's the point. You can start with engineering, you can start with STEM, you can start with Max, you can start, you pick it. And you can take any path. You can start off as a design engineer, like I did. I started designing hardware, then software, and then careers over. But you can also start as a hotel manager and then decide that you want to find something that you like and start using technology to solve problems, real problems, using technology in innovative ways. As long as you develop certain skills, you will succeed. And those skills on the way, I think, are, first of all, you have to have some technical skills. And you can pick them up in school or you can pick them up on the job. I picked mine at school. The communication skills, I picked up from my wife. <laughs> but you can pick them up from anywhere else as well. Financial skills, I'm still struggling with, but these are things that you have to pick up as well. Problem solving is key. So is leadership skills, and that's where emotional intelligence comes in. Leadership is key in the sense that you don't have to be the chief to be a leader. A leader is about ownership, it's about accountability, it's about drive, it's about wanting to make things happen. And most important of all is focus and perseverance. Like our colleagues mentioned, failure will happen and blocks will come in the way. It's okay to fail. It's not okay not to try. So, and most of those people that we talked about failed many, many, many times, but what made them succeed is that they never gave up. So keep in mind that as you're looking for a career, pick something that you're passionate about because the major doesn't matter. What matters is that you care and you care deeply about something, that you're going to focus on it and persevere. Stay focused on the long term because things will come in the way and they'll move you away from it. Pick up all the different skills on the way. Stay curious because things are changing. As I was talking to Don, we live in an era of hyper change. There used to be a saying that the only constant is change. Well, it's even gotten worse now. Those changes are changing even faster. What used to take six years to change now are changing in weeks. So stay curious, innovate and take risks. If you keep on doing the same thing, you're going to stay where you are. And most importantly, just remember that technology isn't everything, but technology isn't everything. 
I hope that, that inspires you. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Hani, I'm Yusuf's brother, um, and uh, I'm glad to be home. I see my home, and so it was Yusuf's, where I see graduates. I won't tell you which year, because uh, you give our age away. But I want to say that uh, after uh, I see, I went to MIT and then I went to Harvard, and I have to thank IC for the base that it gave me for me to do well in those schools. And the way I got into MIT is interesting. Look, who knows Torch? You know Torch? I see a show of hands, yeah. Okay, Torch got me into MIT. I was the editor in the year, I was about to say the year, but I won't. Um, I was the editor and the art director. I started art directing with um, I see Waleed here and Yusuf. I was just a junior in those days. But then I went up the ladder and became the editor of the yearbook. And during the war, we left everything behind. And suddenly, I was in Boston. And they told me, do you have anything? I said, I just have the yearbook. And I showed it to them. And they were like, you did that? I said, yeah, I designed it. And I got into the School of Architecture just because of Torch. So design matters, really. Design is something that we tend to forget. We think of it as an afterthought most of the time. And today we heard about STEM. I'd love to hear about STEAM and the A to it. So we're learning arts. Because throughout the talks today, we heard about creativity and innovation. And learning arts gives you the base to become innovative and creative naturally. Because it teaches you to think laterally across different fields and to be able to visually understand and communicate. So today, I'm talking to you as the Associate Dean of a new university in Dubai, called the Dubai Institute of Design and Innovation. And I'm going to tell you like all the wonderful things we heard from Ayman, Muhammad, and Yusuf, is how are you going to, where are you going to learn those things? And um, we, the school was designed thinking about how do we train the next generation. I call it future-proofing the network generation. Who of your kids does not multitask? Their network, they're online all the time, their screen-based cultures, it's going to change from the screen to space, but still it's an interactive space. And we're creating a term called Pi People, and I'll explain why we think that your kids are the Pi generation. Um, I want to thank Marie for having the um, vision and commend IC, Don and Bruce and everyone for, for instilling these ideas in, in your kids because it's so important for them to know that there are options in life for careers beyond the standard ones that we have. And I feel if they go with the traditional careers, they're going to miss the boat. We saw the inspiring talk by Emin. We saw what EDD is doing to give jobs to our people in tech and design. And we saw Yusuf showing you the way of going in different directions, making choices, whether you create technology or you apply it. So really, I commend IC for having the vision and giving you this platform and giving us a chance to tell you what we're doing. So my, my goal is to tell you about why design is important. It's the missing component in this formula of technology and business. Today, it matters more. Why? Because if you look at the world that we live in, it's dominated by spreadsheets and numbers and school systems that favor math and physics. We want arts to become actually on the same level. It got me into MIT. Okay, so look around you, what you observe, if you look around you, this picture from IC, everything man-made is designed, everything. So design is in everything, we see it all the time, you're wearing it, you're sitting on it, you're being lit by it, your, the space, the materials, the objects, the, the tools, the apps you use, the games you play, they are all designed. Someone has to design them. But no one's being trained to design them properly. We learn on the client's time instead of teaching it in school. So to summarize what my colleagues were saying, we're in the fourth industrial revolution. The first one was steam-based, and the outcome is a commodity. The second phase is a service, 
uh, economy, which is based on electricity. The third one is based on ID systems taking over, and it creates experiences. But what's missing and what we want today, and that's something you heard from the other speakers, is fulfillment. This is the age of fulfillment. Combining mental, emotional, psychological satisfaction with the products and the experiences that we have, the experiences that we seek. What we're seeking is this complete sense of accomplishment. We get robots, we have more time, let's get fulfilled. So if you look at it, there are three pillars to this idea. The first one is profitability. So marketing business people are thinking, how can we make money by um, the, these things that we're producing? How can we make money? This is something that we're used to, something common. So if you want to study business and marketing, that's where you would go. It's been done. Everyone knows how to do it. Feasibility is engineering with the advancement of technology. is very exciting. It's an exciting time to be an engineer. But still, the product is not fulfilling because it's lacking that dimension, which is desirability. And this is what design does. And I'm not saying design comes at the end of the cycle. It should come in integrated with the business and with the technology in it. So we're encouraging people to think of design as integrated, like the A in STEAM. It's integrated in them. It's not replacing them, but it's completing the circle in order to achieve fulfilling experiences and products. That's ex that explains what we know, that there is a need in the MENA region for 30,000 design-related jobs. And this is Deloitte in 2015. The prediction was this number is needed by 2019. So there's a big demand for design. Now we know why, because people understand that design is the differentiator. So today, if I put two cars similar in specs next to each other, similar in price point, the way you're going to pick them is based on how it makes you feel. You're not going to look at the engine. When was the last time you opened the hood of your car? Or opened the hood of the car to pick the car that you want to drive? Pretty much, the engineering aspect has plateaued. Innovation is happening in the comfort, in the ergonomics, in the smartness of it, but not in the hardcore engineering. It's actually these moments, what we call the front end, where you as a customer come in touch with the technology. You feel it, you experience it, and it responds to you. And understanding how it responds to you means you have to understand the user, so you have to be empathetic to users, and that's how we start. We start with design thinking. Who is my user? What do they want? What do they want to achieve? I need to feel with them to take them to the next level. Same thing with the Apple Phone 10 or the Samsung Note 8. When was the last time you did this? It's probably illegal, right? You lose the warranty, right? So basically, your decision is made on the design. The design is the differentiator. Hence, explains why there's this major need for designers because there aren't enough designers out there. And the designers we're training actually are architects, interior designers, graphic designers, but no one's yet provided education for integrating technology, business, and design together. That's, that's our promise. That's what we want to do. Because design mediates technology. It humanizes it. It makes it palatable. It makes it useful. It makes it desirable and pleasant to use. Or if it's bad design, it makes the experience horrible. Right? So the work with blockchains and robots will be the norm, as Ayman showed us. Basically, what we need to do is to future-proof your careers, future-proof our students. And according to that, there are many statistics, but this is the most recent one I found. 85% of future jobs don't yet exist. And we heard this theme going on throughout. So if you want to take your children on a path of learning to become lawyers, engineers, or uh, doctors, that's fine. But there are so many other opportunities. Especially if you notice that your kids love to do something, there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity for them. How many of your kids are gaming all the time? Right? So who's 
designing the games? Why not, if they love it so much, ask them if they want to be a gaming designer. Why not? It's a huge feature, lots of money, lots of prestige in that. Maybe much in a happy, but you know, there would be one day. So here are some jobs that we could think of as we were designing the school. Augmented reality designer, chief drone experience designer. So if you start receiving um, delivered goods by drone, the chances of you trusting that drone are very low. So what design would help is try to understand your emotional connection with the drone and build an experience around it where you build trust with the drone and for the business side, it builds loyalty. So that's what makes an app work or not, is how much do you trust it and how much do you develop that relationship with it. What kind of relationship does the user have with the product or with that? That's design at some level. Embodied interactions designer. Chief Design Officer, that's a role that's becoming more and more prevalent. Because why? Because companies understand that design is a differentiator. This is one of my heroes, is Peter Schreier. He's a designer of the Kia, which now is becoming very high up in choice of car. It's number one in several countries. And he came from Audi, one of the companies that understood the power of design early on. And Kia had the vision of taking him away, and he said, I need to be in the boardroom. Designers need to be involved in the strategic decision making. This is the future. The Internet of Things conductor, as we have all these objects talking to each other, who is going to work on the interface between them? So, as robots start taking over jobs, and we saw from the presentations before, 45% of jobs would be disappeared, and mostly because of automation. How do you future proof? Your kid, you don't want a robo lawyer to take over their work, or a robo logo designer, because those exist already. So what we're looking for is a way to avoid them being replaced by machines, especially that they are super hyper multitasking kids with three screens at least doing different things. So what we need is what we call combinatory education, teaching them multiple skills at the same time. And this is not something that I came up with. It's something that uh, is summit in Abu Dhabi between Google and INSEAD. This was one of the conclusions where Google said, we will only hire people who have combination, combinatory skills, multiple skills, hybrid skills. This was perfect. It resonated with us because we had built a school on merging technology with design. And this is from Dave Miller, who is an important um, recruiter in design. What he basically says, design would evolve into a hybrid industry that is considered as much technical as creative. So I want you to take the idea of design from your mind, the old understanding of design, as someone who makes things pretty at the end of the process, or making the new line of jackets. That's, that's fine, that's part of design, but where we're taking design is integrating with technology and with strategy in order to create future possibilities and solve complex problems. We'll talk about design thinking in a minute. So the IDI is the Dubai Institute of Design and Innovation, which was the brainchild of another IC graduate, um, Ali Jabber, if you know him, from, uh, he graduated in 1980 from I see. He basically was at a majlis with Sheikh Mohammed, the, the, the emir of Dubai. And he called Ali over. He called another businessman and told them, you two, create a design district in Dubai, but start with a school. This was three years ago. It's only three years old, the idea. And we're receiving our first students in, this, in the fall. There's been a huge, huge, huge response, much more than we anticipated. And we would love to see if people from Beirut would join us. And as Dubai does things right, they went to the best design schools out there. To, uh, they were just recently at the one and two design schools in the world. We are collaborating with MIT and Parsons to put together the curriculum. And besides me and MIT alumni, we have other MIT alumni teaching. We're getting the best teachers to come to Dubai to teach what we think is the future of 
design. So our DNA is design and innovation. It's not just design, not making things pretty, but using creativity to innovate and come up with solutions. And what does that mean? It means that design, which is form making as we understand it, mixed with innovation, which is future making, helps us to put visual literacy, the arts, if you want, with digital fluency, learning how to use the tools. As Yusuf said, design uh, technology isn't everything, but you have to know the tools in order to succeed to be able to work at VDE. And we have four C's in them. The first, everything we do has these things. Caring, which is empathizing, or working for sustainability, trying to solve complex problems in the world, which is design thinking, which Muhammad talked about, which starts with empathizing with the user, trying to come up with solutions that would benefit them and hopefully humanity. Conceptualize, to come up with the idea, which is visualization, ideation, iteration. Then being able to create a solution, to come up with a solution, or make it, to fabricate it, which ties back into 3D printing. So in our first year, we teach all about 3D printing. And then communicating the idea, which is problem solving, representation, and implementation. So it's not enough. We think we've already, in this way, we are combination of education through technology and design working together, but there's one more layer. It's not enough. It's not enough. So we, we offer product design, multimedia design, fashion design, and strategic design management because we feel these are the most relevant fields that will transform our society and that can easily receive technology. We're working on a space program, not art space, but space in terms of architecture. That's a bit more complicated. We'll be offering that down the line. But in the beginning, these are the four we're starting with. And students, after the first year, would have to combine two of these majors together. So these are the different possibilities that students can make. So you can chart your own path by merging two fields. It teaches them many things. So one way is to product and multimedia, product and fashion. I want to start imagining on your end, what could that mean? What could multimedia and fashion mean? Multimedia and strategy, fashion and strategy, strategy and product design. So on one level, it's technology and design. But on another level, it's two fields of design that students merge together. That's how innovation is going to happen, by allowing students to experiment, to allow them to try new things, as you said, allowing them to fail, we encourage that in experimentation. So design at the end, in our opinion, is the third leg of this formula. And at the IDI, we integrate it with strategy and technology. We teach them business and we teach them technology. But design is the core of our education. So let's look at what possible careers they might have, product and multimedia an app designer, honestly, I run a business company, and all my clients, they want an app. But I have zero graduates who know how to design an app. I have a super talented team, super talented, but none of them was trained to design an app. If all my clients want an app, and universities are not churning up app designers, we're missing something, there's a gap here. So if your kid says, I want to be an app designer, encourage them to do that. There's, there's a huge demand for it. Huge, I cannot describe to you. The other one, they want creative designers, strategic designers who can think like business people but have a creative edge. So, digital product designer, designing Alexa, who's doing that? No one's trained to do that unless they integrate technology and design. UI UX designer, user interface or user experience designer, huge demand for that. Virtual reality designer, interactive display designer, Interactive exhibition designer, smart health systems designer, smart home systems designer. This is the Nebo for children monitoring. Here's uh, Hind Habeka again with her Insta goggles, who measures heart rate and sends signals about the health performance of the competitive swimmer. Product and fashion, what can happen in that combination? These are the things we can think of, but we're expecting our students 
to show us new things that we don't know about. And that's how the jobs are going to be created. That's why we say 85% of jobs don't exist. Because our kids are going to create them. They're going to invent new things. Wearables designers, uh, wearables designer, 3D printed clothing designer. This is now taking the realm of 3D printing into it. Different examples, multimedia and fashion, VR goggles designer, smart wearables designer, who has a Fitbit here? Who knows, the, who knows the name of the designer who designed it? Nobody knows, right? But someone actually did it. It's probably a team working together. And they spent hours and hours trying to make it friendly so it becomes more desirable for you. So you would wear it and use it and benefit from it. Wearables and app designer, interactive clothing designer, this is quite innovative. This is from Yin Gao. She's an ex-student, recently graduated, uh, connected with Parsons, one of the universities we're working with. And this 3D printed pleating actually responds to the quality of the air. It's like a flower to the sun. It blooms, it opens up, and closes down based on the level of pollution in the space. Um, this is from Philips Interactive uh, Dresses. And this is a more realistic and useful thing. This is from Levi's. It's an interactive uh, jacket where you can actually swipe the sleeve and you get it to answer your phone or send a message. There's a nice video on the Levi's website if you want. It's called the uh, Touch Control Jacket. It's quite, it's quite impressive what they've done. So multimedia and strategy. Um, another Lebanese team, Cyril Najjar, um, did uh, White, the name of the company. They did uh, Sensu Air, which basically measures the pollution. Lebanese company won the CES Innovation Award 2018. It's a huge award coming from Beirut, so you don't need to be anywhere else. Um, people can work with Cyril and his company at BDD, right? So that's what work. Um, another Lebanese, Tony Fadel, the inventor of the iPod, by the way. And he came to the um, to the uh, yes to the forum uh, last year, and he's a serial inventor. Now he has the smart thermostat that he's working on. Or he can be a strategic designer, helping the company improve its positioning strategy. Another one we all know, is chief design officer. I would have put Johnny Ive, the head of design at Apple, in the product design, but now he's shifted to the software design. So here's another position that your child can thrive for. Fashion and strategy. This is now someone, we call this inclusive design thinking of designing clothing for the underprivileged. So this is a huge growth in there. So someone on a wheelchair putting on quadriplegic, putting on a jacket, or someone helping them put on a jacket. Someone has thought about this. This is from MIT and Parsons students, and now it's become a business um, called uh, RAIN. Um, this is another Parsons student doing refugee solutions using clothing that become tents. And this is uh, Suzanne Lee. She's actually experimenting with recycled tea bags to create new materials, which is, these are some of the things that she was able to come up with. So for us, this is fashion design. It's not making the new line of clothing for Hollywood. It's actually trying to find ethical solutions to complex problems. Here's another, the latest thing she's doing, she's working with modern metals, and because I'm vegan, vegans always have to say that we're vegan, so I'm vegan. Uh, this is great because what she's doing is basically creating leather from no animals. This is completely lab-made leather that's actually um, happening today. So she's a fashion designer working with scientists, working with um, the textile experts, dyeing experts, and the way they're, uh, because, you know, uh, um, tanning leather is one of the most polluting experiences, and this gets rid of that, so it has an ecological dimension as well. Here's another company called EcoAl from Spain. They're basically using ground coffee, you know, the espresso after you throw it. They're, they're using it to make fabrics for clothing. Strategy and product design, Elon Musk, Yusuf talked about him, he's a futurist. He's basically someone who understands products and strategy. He positions new products and puts strategy in order to implement them. That's something we will teach. Sustainable transport designer, Teslas. By the way, if you go to Dubai, Teslas are everywhere now. It's quite impressive. Um, and then you have the Hyperloop, which is also being built in the Emirates. This is the Virgin 
one, but it was an idea from Elon Musk, and he put the open source out there so other companies could work. So the sharing economy is actually happening at a large scale. And harsh conditions habitat designer. What does that mean? It's designing for Mars, where you don't have any resources. If you want to build a house, you have to 3D print it from the material that you have there. You can't carry anything with you. It's super expensive. So the Emirates, again, has built or building this Mars science space, and they've committed that they will travel to Mars. And we have, on our faculty, a Lebanese-Armenian designer, his specialty is designing for Mars, and he's joining us as well. So future, the, the last frontier space, we need to start preparing our children to design for it. Um, it can be something more mundane. This is smart glass that responds to the environment and absorbs some of the carbon emissions. Um, this is from a company called View Intelligence. Carbon neutral designer using minimal use of um, um, uh, carbon footprint. Uh, this actually gets a lot of its uh, materials are not made sourced from the earth, but they are sourced from the air. I don't know how, but it's happening. If you want to look at it, it's called New Light Technologies, ranked by The Guardian as one of the 10 most sustainable products uh, this year. Or recycling systems designer. So if, if one problem is what do we do with our recycled technology? So this is a company that's working on, um, it's called an eco ATM where you put your old phones and laptops, etc., and you get instant cash on it. So there's a business model involved with that. There's a strategic understanding of that we need to become sustainable and stop uh, throwing out waste. And it also has an understanding of product design combined. And uh, ethical designer, my daughter's favorite phone is the Fairphone, basically because, again, it, throughout the process, you can see here it's a long-lasting design, fair materials, good working emissions, and reduced recycling. They recycle their phones to produce the new phones. They, they source ethically their materials. They actually work with communities in order to uh, make sure that people are fair traded in the way to get their materials. So that's a long idea, but I just wanted to give you a sense of what jobs are there. There are gazillion out there. And if you want to prepare your students for that, we need to call, make them pie people. This is um, coming from the idea of the tea people, which was introduced by David Guest in the 90s and then popularized by IDEO, a great design thing. Company. If you haven't looked at IDEO, please uh, research them. They founded the D School at Stanford, which is the design school at Stanford. They're actually rethinking how design education should be. Uh, they're a big model for us as well. And we are working now together with IDEO on developing new programs at uh, DIDI. So the T people are basically people who are deep in one skill. So they are, they are, let's say, they are good, solid uh, mechanical engineers or great graphic designers. And they are actually have the soft skills to collaborate across different fields. So, you know, many architects, because I'm an architect by training, um, we usually have a tense relationship with the civil engineers because they say we want to do crazy things, we say they want to do traditional things. But training in the new way with deep people, you train them to be deep in their field but have the empathy to work across different fields. So that needs to be instilled in them in school. But you can guess where the pie came from. It's actually having two disciplines. So depth in two skills and ability to reach across boundaries, even within the design disciplines, but across other disciplines. And so, okay, so generation pie, which is your kids, my kids as well, they will learn to weave together all these different strands. Their multitasking skills can come together now to build a career for them, where they understand research, interaction, empathy, ethical practices, sustainability, visual literacy, the I, the A, and STEAM, and digital fluency, the remaining STM in STEAM, in order to solve the world's worst problems. Because design, at the end of the day, is problem solving. And using creative, innovative, lack of thinking, and applying it to complex problems, that's where the design can be the most useful. Remember the C, K, this is where it's coming from. 
So by firmly planting both feet, the two legs of the pine and the ground, our children will be better adapted to find future jobs, or in the startup culture, better yet, to create their own jobs. Thank you very much. stay around and take questions for a few minutes, but I'd also like to share very briefly that I'd like to circle back to where Mr. Knox started this evening, and he gave us a short list of careers that didn't exist a decade ago. I start most of my mornings in the preschool with the three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Those current nursery school children will retire somewhere around the year 2080. Do the math, 2080. So if you think about the dramatic change that has taken place just in the last decade that we've talked about, we can't even begin to contemplate the world that these kids right down here are going to experience, not at retirement, but even in mid-career, 20 years from now, 25 years from now. There's no way we can conceive of that today. And as the president of IC, I think one of my greatest challenges is to our faculty and to our community and to our parents who tend to think that the recipe for success that led us to where we are today is the same recipe that will work for your children. And I'm here to tell you that I think that is a misplaced expectation. Because what these four panelists have shared with us this evening, I think makes it pretty clear that if your children follow exactly the same educational path that you and I follow, we are going to be ill-equipped for what we saw here this evening. And I would also venture to say that I think for most of our studies today, I could take all of the adults in this room put you in a classroom in Rockefeller, and it wouldn't be that much different than from when you were there. Which tells me that the recipe for success that has been a traditional ticket to the future is not likely to be the one that will be best serving these youngsters here in the front row. So with that, I'd like to thank our panel, and we have several microphones here. Anybody like to ask some questions of our panel? Maybe the panel members can come up and stand right here uh, on the or in front of the stage so that we can give you microphones. Questions, anyone? A very ignorant question. What's the difference between an accelerator and an incubator? Accelerator is a program which is usually a four-month program or six-month program, condensed, specific to be led according to some technical and business skills, and they graduate the startups with that, and usually their model is taking a percentage of the startup to help them grow to a level to achieve more business. And an incubator is just a space where you tend to be able to sit and stay as much as you want and get access to their training programs that happen throughout the year, but there's no specific time frame to be able to access it or no specific program that you get access to. Yeah. I know Ali Jabir personally, I'm glad to meet you finally, and you, both of you are Lebanese, establishing a DIDI in Dubai, in the Emirates, which actually reflects the failure as a country to provide the ecosystem for you to be here. Most of the students you're trying to recruit over here are going to be Lebanese staying in Dubai instead of actually having you guys teach over here. So I think there is a need for an awareness campaign in this country to change the system, to allow it to accept these innovative ideas, the ease of establishing institutions such as the IDI and so forth. Hamad actually can attest to that and he's working hard on that by creating an academy in this space. So I think that's something that if you have any comments, I would love to hear your opinion about it. Thanks for
for a very good question. And um, when I moved to Dubai recently, uh, I left with a heavy heart because my intention was to do it here. As uh, Muhammad showed, I was involved in a small part in designing some spaces and some branding for BDD companies. And I was the president of the Beirut Creative Cluster. And on my mission was how do we retain talent in Lebanon? And uh, despite all my efforts for six years, I tried very hard to reform design education in Lebanon. But it fell on deaf ears, I have to tell you that. And as you saw in Dubai, it came straight from the government. From the top level, they said, just do it and go, and here's, here's the way to do it. So what we need is um, an NGO or government-based ways to raise funds in order to do it. It needs funds to happen, right? And good leaders, right? And so, but um, I assure you, I'm coming back to Lebanon, for sure. I assure you, I'm coming back. And I will encourage all of our Lebanese students to come back as well. And so what we want to do is build relationships with the Lebanese community to make sure that they have pathways. And Mohammed, you come in very important in this ecosystem to encourage our students when they graduate to come to Lebanon. Maybe one day we'll do a BIDI, you know, who knows? I'm ready for it if you want. Um, I don't have a question. I just want to commend you gentlemen for the presentation, the content, and the way you present things, and thank IC for bringing this about. Uh, I'm not sure I want to be around in 20 years after hearing what I've been hearing. As it is, I mean, my children and I, and perhaps my wife, are drifting apart. And uh, with the advent of uh, the robocop, uh, robo-lawyer, robo-doc, and maybe robo-wife, Robo lover and husband. Uh, my concern is, I, I, you know, when I walk uh, by West Hall, where Yusuf and I went to school, and I see, uh, we used to congregate there. You couldn't find a place to sit down or the Green Oval. Now I walk by, there's nobody there. Uh, and th this is my concern. I mean, all this nice stuff going around. How do you, gentlemen, I mean, the, the, the interaction between the human, the personal touch, that's my concern. I don't want to be around. This is a good design thinking problem. Yeah, yeah. Perfectly. So now you propose the problem. Now we need to try and understand um, what's the benefit for users and why they're not doing it. So we do a lot of research, trying to understand it. And then once we do it, we start brainstorming as a group, figuring out solutions. And it might be that we need to activate the space, we need to encourage people. So maybe you need to hire a curator to do more space. Bring people into the space, yes. I agree with that. So it's a, good, it's a good problem. But I'd like to come back to something that um, I read a while back. Um, here's the situation. Um, parents are complaining about a new thing that came out. And um, they were saying, my child's always with it. Um, they become antisocial. They use it to go to imaginary places. They, they use it even after bedtime. They're, they're losing sleep on it. They're not making friends. And they're always in this fantasy world. This was a description of the Victorian age of the pocketbook. Right? And so I think every time we have disruptive technology, our first reaction is to do that. But what you're witnessing, though, is, is true. There's less social life going on as we start. Reforms, but also we need to put it in perspective and maybe go deeper and try and understand why there is this less um, interest in public space. It's a great problem. I think about it, and maybe we do research for the students. So, maybe, um, actually, th there are some answers to what you're saying. Uh, on one hand, it's a trend that will level up at one point. On the other hand. The amount of data we have today about each and every one of us in this room uh, makes more targeting relationships. So we used to sit together. I used to be also at West Hall and Green Oval, and there were there was there were they were two different communities. We all know that Green Oval was more hip, West Hall was more politics, etc. So, to speak about engineering. Yeah. I, I went to engineering, actually, but, but I used to spend my time uh, on West Coast. So, uh, 
the amount of data today we have about the human beings is making more targeted relationships. Uh, actually, using neurolinguistic programming techniques, it's very interesting uh, how we can communicate with different people in different ways. For example, now if I uh, if I ask someone, what's what's something that you would like to have? Something, anything, whatever. to the AUB computer science uh, faculty and we're planning to collaborate with them next year for some of our students in the secondary school to actually go to AUB for computer science classes. Uh, that's something we're planning for next year. Uh, the, the, the details are still being worked out but I've been talking with the, the faculty since about October of last year uh, because when I arrived I noticed that big gap in what was currently there. Um, we also met uh, last week, week before, to plan for the development of three STEAM labs in the bottom of Sage Hall. And we're actually working one of, with one of the uh, organisations that you mentioned with the coding to help us plan to uh, lay that out in a manner that's most effective for the purpose that it's uh, being designed for. We're also uh, completely changing the IT curriculum next year to be that design cycle. Project based, uh, identify a problem, uh, brainstorm, use all the tools at our disposal to try and solve it and come up with a solution because as we've heard tonight, that is what we have technology for. Uh, gone are the days of sitting down to learn how to do a uh, Excel some formula. That will come within the project of, in the business element of, of what we're doing. You know, I need to manage the finances. Oh, okay, well, use an Excel spreadsheet and go and learn how to do the sum. Um, we're also, we've also been granted uh, some very good um, grants that have funded a lot of Arduino, robotics, drones. Actually, we don't have enough space in the second school to store it. If you walk into my office, you'll see boxes of iPads and drones and robots because we don't know where to put them yet. Uh, so there's a lot of things happening so that next year, um, certainly in the secondary school, but not just in the secondary school, the middle school is also in increasing the amount of uh, coding, robotics that are taking place there. The three STEAM labs are for middle and high school. Um, Dr. Shahab has been uh, instrumental in bringing together all this equipment, uh, the, the funding, the grants, so uh, he needs to be congratulated because uh, his foresight has meant that this is really starting to take place, as has uh, Don and, and his push for these things. So next year, there will certainly be some changes heading in this direction because uh, it's critical. Yeah. 
I'd like to add a couple of things too. Uh, I've only been at IC for four years, but when I arrived and I was introduced to IC's master facility plan, which is a 20, 25, 30 year plan. Started with the elementary school, now it's the preschool and the middle school opening up uh, next September. And the original plan as I understood it was that eventually Sage Hall, our current middle school building, would become kind of an art building with a dining room down in the basement. And I took a look at that plan and I thought, who needs a dining room down in the basement with this beautiful weather? Our kids need to be outside more than inside. I can't imagine anybody choosing to go to the basement of a building for lunch or break when you can sit outside in front of, in front of uh, Rockefeller Hall. So my vision was to change that so that one day Sage Hall becomes IC's STEAM building. And of course the A, as our panelists have said, represents art and design. Lebanon, historically, knows it has a reputation for math, science, architecture, the science of math careers in particular. But if you infuse that with the A for creativity, art, design, innovation, now you've got something that is really valuable. You have the traditional engineer or doctor or architect or other professional who can apply that foundational knowledge in a unique, new, creative and innovative way to solve problems. So I would love to see someday that the Sage Hall becomes IC's Google Center for STEAM or Apple STEAM building or something of that nature. That would be my vision for the future because I think those kids that I referred to earlier in preschool uh, would be better served if we had that kind of a facility. Comment, yes. Yeah. I want to just comment on the human factor. We, one of the most important things that we see more and more is like, and everything in the presentation is problem solving to have a more human-centered approach and a better life. And, and so even when you hear like the CEO of IBM with Watson, tells you that Watson will be able to predict what is the best uh, cue to treat a certain uh, ill person for cancer, but the decision, the final decision, will be human based. And the, because Watson will be able to read thousands and thousands of research paper and diagnose and give him A, B, or C, but he will have to make the final decision. So it's really optimizing that. Second, if you hear, and it's scary, it might be scary, but if you hear the chairman of SoftBank on his visions and going back on chips, now everything the most important is chips. Because every people, everyone thinks that we will be microchip. They think and they believe with singularity. Singularity is where the machine will start to have feeling and will outpass the human brain and human feelings. And this for him will happen at a moment where the machines will force human to co live in a harmonious way. Which will force human to know that it's not by fighting or conflict they will be achieve a better way of life. We don't know if it's achieved, but this is his vision on machines predicting and forcing you. Now it might force us also in the, in the, in the house how to live with our wife better, I don't know, but like this is what they're uh, predicting. Final thing, we had that chief uh, mayor of Barcelona come to BDD last year. He said all his, they, well, Barcelona was voted one of the smartest cities in the, uh, in, in the world two years ago. And the example he gave is just started by giving a, a necklace with a pink to all elderly people. So that if anything happens for elderly people living alone, they would just touch it and it sends a signal to them to be able within 15 minutes to come and serve them. The next step that they were doing is that follow up their life. If, he, they, if this elderly person does not open the fridge, then they will go visit that person to see if there's anything that's not happening. So it's always going back on how can I improve and solve problems. And this is, I believe, what in the presentation should learn and teach our children is empathy. And this goes back to empathy as a human approach, putting yourselves in the other's shoes, 
feel with the others, and try to understand how can I improve the situation. So, question here. Yeah, good evening. Uh, the art part is asked for. Uh, I'm very much interested. In. But the thing is that uh, our children, you know, we are not uh, innovators. Okay, we are business people. So to convince them and to put them in the right path, I think they need to hear it from you guys or their uh, teachers uh, to be more involved with them in that direction, which uh, I think, uh, I don't know what IC is doing about, about this, uh, this issue. I'll just add, uh, one of the things that we're hoping to expand upon is the shadowing program that we've had recently in uh, secondary school. We'd like to expand that into a, a more formal internship program. We actually, through the kindness of two of these gentlemen standing here, they've actually helped us provide internships for some of our current students, or recent graduates. Hadi, you're here. I think we introduced you to Beirut Digital City, and I think you're in an internship program with them now. We're looking to expand that. I would ideally like to see that every IC student beginning at least grade 10, Segun, have uh, a three-day internship minimum each year as they go through secondary school, and that we supplement that with longer extended internships during the summer, during the Christmas holiday, maybe the Easter break, where they could have a week or as long as two weeks in internship programs. And I'm very, very pleased and proud to know that these gentlemen here are helping us with that. We have another question right here. Just a good question to add to the skills of our children is because it's becoming very, very difficult actually to define the skills of the children. And one of the faults that I feel that some of us are falling uh, into is actually seeing a kid play around with computers and see, thinking that he is computer talented or can go into computer science. So I'm very glad that I see introducing coding very early on to actually explain that there is very hard coding behind those gadgets that we are using. Um, so I, I, I'd like to have your opinion a little bit about, uh, we come from a DOS generation who knew computers, who could open those computers that Tani you showed that we are not opening anymore. We could add memory chips. And today kids don't have any idea about this. They think that by going and helping at the age of five Teta on her, on, her la on her laptop or on her whatever it was, on her Facebook, makes them computer savvy. But they don't know that there's millions of lines of codes behind it. So I think we need to also go back to some of the roots of where those new machines are coming from and are still coming from and will always come from, which is this hardcore co uh, coding that is still necessary. So I don't know what you're doing. I, 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 I sound old fashioned, but that. Then if I may, I, I think none of us are saying we should stop doing that. I think what we're saying is we should add to it, add to it the A, add to it the empathy, which has been missing from traditional. Uh, it's more about so, and then you also have the path of creating and the path of applying, and they're depending on whether you're creating or applying. And they're both very creative, they're both innovative. You'll need different kinds of skills. But absolutely, nobody's saying you have to stop doing that. I think the key is that it has to be more cross fertilized and broad. If I can close this evening, and I apologize for not having more time for questions, um, what this has uh, told me tonight is that I need to have a similar session during the school day with these gentlemen. Uh, because that's, uh, it's one thing to have uh, you folks understand this issue a bit. Yeah. In terms of, the reason it's important for, for parents to understand this is that as the school tries to transition from the more traditional educational role that served us quite well, that's not probably the the way that will best serve the next couple of generations of kids. And as I said earlier, I'm absolutely certain that that's not the best set of skills for our current nursery school kids here who are going to have to be working until 2080. And this is only 2018. 
So uh, I'm sure these gentlemen will be happy to stay here for a couple more minutes if you wanted to come down and ask a specific question to one of them. Otherwise, thank you all very, very much for being here this evening. And uh, I'd like to thank you gentlemen again once more.